Jesus Christ. Dude, so many of you guys have requested for me to cover Reverse 99. Okay, so obviously this is not me trying out a game because the game is going to go uh, live tomorrow at I think about 24 hours from when you're watching this video. So just because this topic is so hot right now amongst you guys, I have decided to do a little bit more investigation and I have found a pretty good website that has what I would think is the CN tier list of the game. So right now, the game is currently launched in CN, I think since May of 2023. So they have quite a few months of head start. They have five months of head start to be exact. I do suspect that they intend to narrow the gap. So instead of having a five months gap between CN server and the global server, I think they are trying to narrow it down and I'll show you why I feel like that's the case later on. I don't really have any proof for any of these. Okay, so whatever they are looking at right now, this is a tier list that is done by some members of the Pride Wen community, I guess. So I'm not sure who we is, but huge shout out to you guys, whoever that has been playing the CN server in order to provide us such elaborate information. Okay, I wouldn't say that it's very elaborate, but it just, you know, splits the tiers according to S, A, B, C, D, whatever that we have expect, whatever that we should expect. Furthermore, segregating according to damage dealers, support and survival, which I think this is probably like, kind of like support but healers, right? But beyond that, what they have also done is to segregate this entire tier list according to uh, the early game and the late game as well. So you can see that some characters stay in the early game, some characters stay in the late game. Now, the thing is, obviously, I haven't actually played this game. I cannot say whether this tier list is going to be good or not, but I think this is currently the best that we have right now. And I've taken a look at some of the characters here and I kind of understand why they are rated so highly. I do agree. I mean, just, just going by like whatever that I understand about games in general, I do agree that some of these characters seem pretty, pretty insane. So I'm just going to leave this to you because I think most of you guys probably don't even know how to read this as well. I mean, or at least you do not even know what each of the characters do. And you can see that there's many, many characters here. And another nice thing that they added is they actually added the patch update over here. So you can see that Black Dwarf, there is a 1.3 here. That is not her proportions or anything like that. It's actually the update where she drops, so she is going to be released in three updates time. So we have 1.0 as a global release, we have 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, so on and so forth. So you can see that Pickles, the dog, is going to be the next released character. So anyway, I'm going to leave this link in the descriptions below, you can go ahead and check it out. We're going to move on quickly to the next topic, which is what I feel like is probably going to be my aim at the start of the game. So which of these characters I'm going to go for, and I'm going to give you some other suggestions as well if you're not able to do so. So the thing is, there is reroll in this game, I'll talk about it towards the end of this video. So for the most part, we are able to reroll for the characters that we want, and there are three characters right now that I'm very interested in. The first is Eternity. Let's take a look at what she does, right? So don't worry too much about this as like a bunch of stuff. So this is their ultimate attack. Mass attack deals 300% reality damage to all enemies, then you life steal for 50% of the damage that you deal. So there is an inbuilt life steal over here, very nice, and she has two, how should I say, okay, this is somewhat like uh, seven deadly sins, Grand Cross. So you have two different kinds of attacks, right? You have the Purse of Vigor, for example, you also have the Antique Fan, and depending on how many of these copies you combine together, you would have an increased effect over here. So let's take a look at what the maximum effect is. Attacks one target that caster suffers current HP minus 10% and deals 500% reality damage, inflicts one round of nasty wound on a target. And nasty wound is healing taken minus 50%. And as for antique fan, mass attack, which is basically an AoE attack, current HP minus 10% and deals 400% reality damage to two enemies. So she just deals a lot of damage. And at the end of the day, when she uses the ultimate, she's actually going to restore some of her HP with this AoE damaging skill. So it's kind of easy to understand what she does. And of course, there are other stuff like Inheritance, which I suspect is your resonance system in this light. I think, at least, right? But she has a bunch of other very interesting stuff, like she has immunity to bleed, corrode, poison statuses, which is pretty nice. Especially since she's a DPS, you kind of want her to stay alive, and you don't want her to receive any of these damaging debuffs, right? And so on and so forth. There are also equipments in this game, like Hopscotch, Brave New World, His Bounden Duty, and Yearning Desire. What I think really works well for her is probably his Bounden Duty. And what this does is essentially just gives you lifesteal. So for each enemy target defeated by the carrier, HP plus, you know, a percentage of the carrier's attack. So whenever Eternity, which is the character that we are looking at over here, whenever she kills something with that equipment, she's going to replenish her own HP, which is really nice. So she's able to keep herself alive uh, for the most part. And why I say that is because this is where the other two characters comes in and I think they are quite important as well. So uh, the next character that I want to show you guys is An An Lee. This is going to be the second character that I'm very interested in. And this is generally what she does, right? So she either has a Tauri's rune skill here, which damages one target and inflicts days, which is essentially just a stun, which is actually quite helpful because it's a 3v3 format. So this is instantly one out of three enemies unable to move. Or you can use her Lily Nectar, which I think is amazing. So even at just one single copy of this, right? So you don't even need to combine this at all. You 
already increase damage dealt and damage taken reduction for all of your allies for two turns. This is very powerful in my opinion, right? It goes all the way to 30% extra damage that you are going to deal and you also reduce 30% of damage that your allies take for two entire turns. This is very, very powerful. And now finally, the third character that I want to introduce to you guys is going to be Madsen Pocket. And she, in my opinion, is quite insane. So her ultimate also inflicts days on the target for one turn, which is another stun. So this is really, really helpful. And this is her first skill. You attack one target, deal damage, and then the enemy actually has increased damage taken for one turn. So this also further pushes your DPS, but if you need some healing and some protection, she actually has it on her second skill, which is Mass Healing, which heals based on the caster's attack, which is herself, and gives one Sturdiness stack for all allies. Sturdiness is just reducing damage taken by another 20%. This is super, super strong in my opinion, right? So with both an Unli and Medicine Pocket, you're going to reduce a lot of damage. I think about 50%, uh, assuming that it stacks additively. And aside from that, if you want to go offensive, you can use her offensive skill over here. An Unli also has her own offensive skill, which is essentially her first skill that lends stuns, right? The days over here. So it's pretty good that you can manipulate your team according to what you require. You either need a lot of sustain, a lot of support, or you just going to go all out offense. And I think this is probably a really, really good trio. Now, the thing is, only one of these characters can be guaranteed obtainable. And let's take a look at uh, this section over here, where is the event timeline. So there will be three banners tomorrow. The first is the first drop of rain. You see that these three are essentially selector banners. Okay, so Eternity is going to be one of them. There is also Regulus here and Lilia, both of which are also pretty good DPS uh, characters. But Eternity is going to be free. Now, that means that you have your DPS settled, but your supports, they are not settled. However, one of the other banners here is extremely good when using with Eternity because do take note that Eternity does reality damage, right? So she is a reality king herself. But taking a look at this banner over here, Clank of Sword and Armor, these two, okay, they are, they are considered five-star characters, but essentially they are like epic characters in this light, right? So these two five-star characters, they really complement her really well. So the first character over here, we have Tenant, And take a look at why she is so good with Eternity. So a bouquet of Galaxy, this is a second skill, Mass Buff, gives all allies a shield, which is based on her attack for one turn and reduces damage taken while the shield is active. So there is already damage mitigation over here coming from this skill, which is instantly activatable with just one stack of it, right? So this is really, really strong in my opinion. Instantly 20% damage mitigation. But if you have her at inside one, which I expect to be Rezo one, for example, after the caster enters battle, you immediately start with a bouquet of galaxy, which means you instantly have 20% damage mitigation and a shield to top it off. So this is going to protect your eternity because you want to protect your main DPS over there. So I feel like she is pretty good in that sense and she's also a reality DPS. And why this is so important is because of her ultimate over here. One single attack deals 550% reality damage and loads two rounds of diamond bullet. And what diamond bullet is, is after the caster attacks, reality defense minus 30% to the target for two rounds. So this is going to improve the DPS output of not just Eternity, but herself as well, Tenon. And let's take a look at the next character on the same banner, which is Clank of Sword and Armor. We have Bicorn Bloom, right? So this character is also quite insane. She's also a reality DPS, but let's take a look at her skills, which makes her a lot stronger, in my opinion, using together with Eternity. So we're going to skip the first one, watch your sleeves. I don't think this is going to be that relevant because we don't have any status down. Assuming that we are using Eternity, we are using Tenant, and we are also using uh, Bicorn Bloom, right? We don't have any debuffs, I think. So skipping this all the way to Prime Ear, Mass Debuff, all enemies suffer reality defense minus 15%, all the way to minus 25% and increases the damage that you take by another 15% all the way to another 25%. This is insane, dude. This AoE debuff reduces their defense and increases the damage that they take as well. Lasts for three rounds. This is so strong. This is so freaking strong. So like I said, right, if let's say you do not need this debuff for some reason, which I think you should because all of your characters are reality DPS, then if that's the case, you can actually use like a massive AoE attack here. But uh, I don't think it's going to be the highlight of her use. So these three characters will be whatever that I'm going to go for, right? So we have Eternity, which is the guaranteed selection. We have Beacon Bloom, who is just a 5-star character, so it's probably going to be quite easy to obtain. And we also have the other character who is, I forgot the name, Tenant, right? Yeah, so Tenant. These three characters, they seem to be really good together. And I checked the rest of the banners. Unfortunately, the main 6-star characters that I was going for, which is Eternity over here, our DPS, Anan -An Lee over here and Madsen Pocket. Unfortunately, they don't have their own banners, right? These two characters, Anan -An Lee and Madsen Pocket, they don't have their own banners. 
Now, before I end off this section, obviously, I do not know whether this strategy is going to be the best strategy. I just feel like it's kind of malleable. It's kind of fun to play with. It's very simple to understand, very easy to execute. And that's why I like it so much. We do not have a healer if I were going for the more free-to-play approach, which is Eternity with the other two five-star characters from the Clang banner. But yeah, so take whatever that I say with a grain of salt. That's just my own goal right now. Okay, so anyway, ending off this video, let's talk a little bit more about rerolling. So there is actually a reroll guide here as well. And unfortunately for iOS users, the only way that you can reroll is by deleting your in-game data, which means you have to re-download everything, which is about two to three gigabytes if I, if I remember correctly, right? So over here, if you're playing on iOS device, unfortunately, this is the only way that you can reroll. So you have to clear your cache, then re-download part of the in-game data, but they say seems to be sub 100 megabyte on release. I'm not super sure whether this is true or not, but also they are not sure if by clearing cache, that will allow you to create a new account and reroll this way. So we need to wait for the game to launch to confirm this for the time being. But I think the best way is probably to reroll on an emulator. So you need to have one main instance where you download the game, but you do not want to open it, right? You just, you don't want to open it at all so that you can clone this main instance. And from each of your subsequent instances, you're going to have to re-download all the necessary resources for the game so that you can re-roll this way. And I think each re-roll is going to take you about 10 minutes or so. But apparently the most efficient way is to play for 30 minutes. Yeah, it's stated over here, right? So 10 minutes for a fast re-roll, assuming that you're running many, many multiple instances and you can do this really, really quickly. But if you're like me and your computer sucks, you might want to do the efficient re-roll, which is going to take you about 30 minutes per re-roll. But of course, if you don't really care too much about rerolling and you just want to go with whatever that you get, then rerolling is probably not super important, especially if you don't even know whether you're going to stick with the game for like the long term, right? So what I would suggest is to just play the game, get whatever you get, see whether you enjoy the characters that you have, and see whether you even enjoy the game to begin with before you even consider rerolling. Because rerolling is a lot of investment. So I'm going to just enjoy the game as it is before attempting to reroll. And I'm probably going to reroll offline or I might make a reroll video when the game actually comes uh, tomorrow. Ah yes, before I forget, the reason why I say that I think they are trying to match the global server with the CN server, which is a good thing by the way. The reason why I think they're going to do so is take a look at this, right? Upcoming patch 1.0. Patch 1.0 in a global release will be shortened compared to the CN version. Okay, so yes, there is one patch that is being shortened. Is that it? I don't think that's all because if we take a look at patch 1.1, Patch 1.1 in the global release will be shortened compared to the CN version. Essentially, that means that this entire duration over here, which is about one month long, is probably a lot longer in the CN version. So at the end of the day, the gap is going to be narrower, narrower, narrower. And eventually, hopefully, we will have the same timeline as the CN server, which is really good. Now, maybe one more thing before I end of this video, which is what I'm super excited about, is let's take a look at the app magic of this game. So over here, we have app magic and we are taking a look at reverse 1999. You can see that the revenue in the past 30 days in China alone, CN server basically, right, is 2 million. This is a lot considering that we are talking about just China, right? We're not even talking about US, which is probably like the biggest spender in the world. And 2 million is pretty damn big. I mean, okay, you cannot really compare this to like Hong Kong Star Rail. Those are crazy numbers. You have like maybe 40 million or something like that. But the trajectory of this game looks pretty good and I'm kind of hyped and this is giving me some good vibes as well. So, yeah. But yeah, anyway, that's it for this video. You guys have mentioned so much Reverse 1999. Hopefully you guys are as hyped as I am because right now I am extremely hyped and I can't wait for tomorrow to be honest. And it's about 24 hours, like I said, right? So if you have any other useful information, don't forget to leave it down in the comment section below so that everyone else can get a, a piece of it and understand the game a little bit better before the game actually launches. But yeah, what I do know is that the game has probably no PvP, which is a plus or a minus depending on how you look at it. But with that said, that's the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and subscribe for more Reverse 1999 content. Now with that said, this has been Derek Free to Play and as always, I will see you in the next video.